In the last video, we made all the connections necessary to incorporate your external synthesizer into your Cubase project, not only through MIDI, but also through audio. And now in this video, I'm going to show you the final step to make this whole process complete. So in the last video, we were able to record MIDI and play back the MIDI tracks through the audio monitor channel so that we could hear it and let's just press play now and make sure that we can hear all of that instrumentation in our Cubase project. Yep, sounds right. I've got all the drums, the piano, the vintage Mark 1 piano, and the MIDI part coming out of that external synthesizer. So now I'm going to show you the problem that people run into if they skip the step that this whole video is about. And that is recording the final output of the project. Because here's what happens, and I'm going to do this kind of quickly because we're jumping ahead quite a bit here. But I'm going to mark the beginning and ending of this project with my left and right locators so the whole thing gets mixed down. And then I'm going to export this as a stereo audio file by going to the audio mix down and making sure that I have my stereo output on. It's going to be called the right track. It's going to be set in the, I'll just choose the audio folder of the project, and it's going to be 44.1 in 32-bit mode, and I'm not going to have it open in WaveLab when it's done exporting, then I'm going to hit the export button. And this process is what you would do to export or burn onto an audio CD or export as an MP3 file. So I'm going to close this window now and I'm going to bounce out to my finder. So here's the right track folder and I stored it in the audio folder of that project. So here's the mix down file and we heard that the Cubase project sounded right while we were in Cubase. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to preview this mix down file and make sure that everything is there. So I'm going to highlight that track and hit my space bar. Huh. Where'd the Taurus pedals go? My external synthesizer was not included in the mix down. And the reason why is because only when you convert the tracks that you record with an external synthesizer as audio tracks will it actually become part of the audio mix down. So I can't use this track to make an mp3 or burn onto an audio CD because it's not complete. So I'm going to get rid of that file. And then I'm going to come back to my Cubase project, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to solo that MIDI track that contained the bass pedal performance. And then I'm going to unrecord enable that track and record enable the audio track that I had set up as a monitor track. And I'm going to unmute that so that both of those tracks are soloed. So now what I'm going to do is play back the MIDI track and at the same time be capturing the sound from the Taurus pedals going into my audio track. So essentially I'm converting a MIDI track to audio by recording its audio output. So I'm going to rewind and hit the record button and I don't actually have to play anything because I've already played the MIDI track. Now I'm just capturing the audio coming out of that external synthesizer. You can see that the audio is being recorded. Now one of the things that you'll have to take into account is that you want to continue the recording until the very last little bit of sound comes out of that external synthesizer. Because if you stop the recording too soon, you might be chopping off the recording even though it might sound right in the Cubase project, you have to make sure that the audio that you're capturing completes all of the last notes that were played on the synthesizer. So now I'm going to hit save on my Cubase project 
And I'm going to disable the solo so that all of the tracks will now become part of the export. I'm also just going to make sure that I don't have the monitor on anymore because this is now its own audio track. So you can either turn monitor off or sometimes when you hit the record enable button on the track, it will also turn the monitor off automatically. But just verify that your audio tracks are not in monitor mode. If you don't, this track may not make it to the export. So now I'm going to rewind all the way. I'm going to move my left and right locators around the entire project because this new segment goes a little bit further than the rest of these tracks. And now I'm going to perform the same audio export to mix this project down. So I'm going to call it a different name just so that you can see what's going on here. I'm going to call this the right track R1 for revision 1. And then I'm going to export the project. And now this time it's going to incorporate that new audio track that was made from the output of the external synthesizer and it's going to include it in the audio mix down. So I'm going to hit the cancel button, pop back out here to the finder. Here's the new The Right Track R1 stereo mixdown file. When I preview this file by clicking on it and typing my spacebar, ah. Now we've got that external synthesizer incorporated into our audio mix down. So that's an extra step that you'll have to take when you're using external synthesizers with their own sounds. You have to convert the MIDI tracks that you've recorded into audio before you can perform the audio mix down. And now in the next section, we're going to learn a lot more about Halion Sonic SE, the synth workstation that comes with Cubase 6.